Okay, so let's keep moving forward and let's start to work on how we're going to do the branches. So I'm probably going to split this into a couple of videos because there's you know quite a bit to uh, work with uh, when you're starting to put the branches on there. And the trunk's actually one of the more easier parts there. Um, so let's go into our graph here. And uh, what I'm going to do is branch off from here. All right, so um, and the reason why is because I just want the actual curve itself or this line right here. So the first thing I'm, I'm going to do, or the first thing that I want to do, is give the end user, or the person who's using this HDA, the ability to place the branches on a specific part of the tree. All right, so, you, you know, tree, all trees are different. Some trees, you know, their branches start really low. Some, you know, the branches start really high. Um, and they always usually go to the top there, too. So uh, we need to give that kind of control. So I'm going to hit tab here and drop down a carve node. And this carve node will allow me to select an area where the branches will start to grow. All right, so you notice by default, uh, the first U is turned on here. All right, so what we need to do then is just turn on the second uh, U. And this will just give the artist the ability to change where the branches start and end. All right, so that's what we're doing that for. Perfect. Okay, so with that, uh, what I want to do uh, from this point is I kind of want to I want to actually change the normal direction here. So let's drop down another poly frame. And I'm going to um, do that same technique. All right, so what we're going to do is just put this to points, turn that off, and type an N for that. And uh, what I want to do then is uh, reverse those normals. All right, so what we can do is just drop down another attribute wrangle node, like so. And really quickly just say at N is equal to negative at n. So the, the reverse of that, there we go. So they go all in a different direction and we can actually just do the first edge and you can see that, you know, we get different directions. Now I would play around with it a little bit. I'll probably leave it on that just for now. Um, so what I wanna do now is uh, resample it so we get some more points in there or at least we have the ability to change the amount of points that we want to use, all right? Because this will determine how many branches are on the actual tree. Okay, so uh, I'm also going to set this to a subdivision curve just so it smooths it out a little bit more. Cool. And I'm going to change this to maximum segments. This way we'll allow someone to determine how many branches they actually want on that tree. Okay, we'll leave it about like seven. That looks pretty good there. All right, we should probably move the polyframe down to the bottom here and do the calculation there and do that like so. So, uh, one thing I wanted to cover here, uh, really briefly, um, is making presets. Now, if you're not familiar with making presets, now this is a very you know, simple expression here. Um, and so, I might want to use it over and over again. So, uh, you can come up here and you can actually go and say, save preset. And what it'll do is it'll save this little bit of code. Okay, so I'm going to say, save preset. And we'll just call this reverse uh, normals. All right, save preset. Now, there's a, a billion ways of reversing normals inside of Houdini, uh, but I'm trying to keep it you know, all centered around Vex in here. Um, and so that's why I use the attribute wrangle node. So I definitely encourage you to use other techniques that you are more comfortable with, but that's how we would do it inside of Vex, okay? So let's keep moving forward here. And what we wanna do now is create uh, random points basically, uh, or jitter these points a little bit. Now you can go and use the point jitter here. So if we were to go and use the point jitter again, again, I kind of tend to stay away from this no node um, because it's really not that controllable. But if you do want to use it, you can easily just do the zero, zero for that value and just keep that in one. So it's just going up and down in the y direction there and just kind of, you know, move those out. But, you know, you don't really want to mess with the start and end point. You just kind of want to do the inner point. So, um, to fix that, what we can do is do a group range here really quick. All right, and what I'm gonna do is call this the inner points. Uh, we'll do PTS for points. Or how about we do PNT points? <laughs> All right, so um, what we wanna do then is set it to points and let's just actually turn it on so we can see what we're doing here. And then just move the start and end to one in both parameters there. That way it deselects the start and end points. And then in the point jitter, we would go and just use 
um, that inner points. Now, it doesn't always show up here, so you just have to type it in. So we'll say inner points, and you can see now we're not affecting the start and end points. All right, but again, you know, you can totally start to get this out of control really quickly, and it's not really what I'm looking for. I want something a little more controllable. So let's go and do a different technique. So I'm going to get rid of that group range, uh, but I wanted to show that you could do it that way as well. Uh, another way to do it is just to scatter some points. So we can go and just scatter some points on here. And you'll notice that we now, let's turn off the point numbers. We have a ton of points. So let's set this back, the force total count to something like seven, like we had up in our resample. So if I were to actually just go and copy this, I'm going to copy this parameter and then just put that into the force total count, like so. So now whenever I change the resample, I'll get more points. All right. Cool. So we'll just leave it at something like that. All right. Now, what we can do inside of this scatter here is we can go and uh, now change the relax iterations. And this will allow us to get that kind of scattered points. And you can also do the scale by radii right here, or scale radii by parameter. And that gets you some really cool values too. So now you have lots of different ways to create kind of randomized points. All right, so that is that. And you also notice that they pick up the normal direction, which is going to be useful as well. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out the video there. And in the next video, what we're going to do is create the normal directions for the branches to branch out from. Okay.